to crack the code of high D. Yes! Anyway, today's video is not about specifically trombone, but it is about things. I don't always like to talk about things, but I've been watching Tested's videos on YouTube, and they have all their creators come in, and they talk about like kind of, I don't know if it's five favorite things, but it's just generally things that they've enjoyed using and having in 2022. I've never made a video like this, so I'm going to talk about a few things that I've had for longer than just 2022, but hopefully it gives you the gist of some stuff that I've enjoyed using. Some of it is trombone stuff, some of it is trombone adjacent. Uh, anyway, here we go. And this is in no specific order, so I'm not counting down, but we'll talk about probably the most controversial one for me, my iPad Pro 12.9 inch third generation, uh, kind of like 2017 model iPad Pro. I got this a few months ago, I actually don't know how many months ago at this point, and I have used the crap out of it for music and for not music. Um, we'll talk about the downsides in just a moment, but basically um, the cool thing about the iPad Pro is still an iPad, but of course you get to use four score and you have a whole butt ton of music on it. And of course, there we go. Four score is being very slow. We'll talk about that in the, uh, in the downsides. But basically a lot of the gigs and stuff that I do, they'll send out music beforehand in PDF form. They're like, here's stuff to practice before you show up. And if I get that kind of stuff, and sometimes I can ask for it, etc., I just put it on here, and I use it for the gig. It's great! Um, I have a giant set list, because that's how you organize things on here, of all of the gig music that I've used this for. Let's, that's got, uh, of course, it doesn't tell me how many things are on it. Does it? 64 items. So that's 64 things that I have not had to print off any music. I just show up with the iPad, charged to basically anything above like 30%, and I'm good to go for a rehearsal and a concert. And I don't have to worry about having a bunch of paper music. I just have this, and that's it. I have not bought a pedal for this. I have not done anything. I don't have a flick button that you use to like change pages. I just reach out, tap the screen, and change the page. It's very, very useful. I use it a lot when I play with um, friends, with duets. I do a bunch of stuff like that. This aspect of it is really great. Also, and because this is such an, uh, an expensive item, such a big purchase, it's also useful for other stuff. One of the things I love to do is play GeoGuessr. Um, here, here, I'll show you a new location. I've never seen this before. What is it? It's just another random green field. Okay, we're in Europe somewhere. Uh, Northern uh, Europe. Uh, I'm not seeing a language yet. Oh, here we go. Uh, we are in the Netherlands or Belgium. I'm going to guess the Netherlands. I'm going to guess around it's a little bit south of Amsterdam. Boom. Where are we? Oh, I was pretty far off in the realm of the Netherlands. 72 miles away. Hey, pretty good score, though. But I do a lot of that kind of stuff. I have a bunch of Netflix on here. Um... I read stuff on here sometimes. It's generally handy. It's not a computer replacement for me. I, I do too much stuff that actually needs like Windows and real applications and like a keyboard and stuff. I don't have like a separate keyboard attachment for this. Sometimes I use my, my real keyboard and I'll carry both. So it's not exactly a replacement for me. So it does have limitations, but I do really enjoy my iPad Pro 12.9 inch that I got used um, for much cheaper than a new one. And I do have to say, um, since I bought my wife a normal iPad, I bought her a brand new um, 2022 model M1 normal iPad. So like the 10 inch model, it's much smaller than this, of course, not for reading music. And I gotta say the Pro is worth the premium because the normal iPad is much cheaper um, still pretty capable, but gives up a lot of the features that the Pro has. And for what I do, which is not what she does, and she uses the iPad normal version quite easily. She doesn't have any things she's missing. But for what I do, I need the Pro. And if you're a musician, I definitely recommend the large size iPad Pro, and I recommend getting a used one. Downsides, um, this is my second case. This I love this case, it's really cool. 
but it had, the first one just died like super hard. The whole thing just came apart. So I had to buy another one after only a few months. Um, getting music on it took forever and there's no easier way. Trust me, I've gone through all the different ways to do it. There's, there's nothing better. There's no easier way. I've talked to lots of people that have these. They have the same problems. If you had a one of these with like the 4G package, so you have just Surface all the time, I think it would probably be a little bit easier to use. But even then, it's still a bummer getting music on here. Um, you do have to worry about the battery sometimes, but mine lasts quite a while, and mine is five years old at this point, so I don't know. I'm, I'm not too worried about it. And again, not super useful as like a general computer. But for me, that's not that big of a deal. So one of my favorite items of 2022, excited to use this more um, in 2023. On to the next item, again, in no specific order, and this is one that I have in my pocket, is Etymotic earplugs. My musician earplugs, called little Christmas trees, um, very topical for this time of year. But these are nine decibel full spectrum musician earplugs. So they cut out nine decibels of sound. 10 decibels is twice as loud as the next level below it. So um, if the surrounding noise is 90 decibels, which is getting to be pretty unsafe for your ears, you put these in and that's now half as loud or just nearly half as loud. But you can hear all the frequencies. So if you're listening to people play or you're listening to yourself, you can still hear basically everything. It's just a lot quieter. And in a lot of settings, these are really useful, both musician settings and others. I went to a friend's birthday party at a bar the other night, and as bars like to do, they had music cranked really loud, lots of people there. It's very noisy. Now, if I put these in, boom, it's half as loud. I can still talk to people. I can still hear what's going on, but I'm not going to walk out with my ears ringing. Um, I also drive a Mazda Miata, which is basically 90 decibels all the time just because there's, you know, not a lot of roof over your head. And so I drive with these in a lot of the time, and it's life-saving. They're cheap. I go through probably like 10 pairs of these a year because I lose them, and the little stems crack. I don't think either of these has started to crack yet, but they'll start to do that after like a week. Um, so I go through a lot of these. I do have nice fitted earplugs, um, musician ones as well, but they cut out like 20 decibels of sound. And so they make things way, way, way quieter. Sometimes that's really nice to have, but most of the time I just need that nine decibels and these are invaluable for that purpose. I'll have a link to these in the description. Next one up, this is actually trombone related, is my Doug Elliott mouthpiece for my small bore tenor trombone. This is a, and of course I have the Lexan rim on it right now, an XT Narrow 104 rim, which is kind of 3G sized, the XT C Plus cup, and the D3 Shank Star 2020. Um, there's probably new um, back pours, new uh, shanks for these at this point. And of course the shank won't come off because I've played this a lot lately. Basically this is kind of like I don't even, I can't even give you a cup size for it. It's shallower than a six and a half AL. Um, it's, you know, semi-open and it's got a 3G rim. It's a perfect mouthpiece for me. And that's the cool thing about the Doug Elliott stuff is you can mix and match these different series, the different rims, and find exactly what works for you and your trombone. It's probably a little bit hypocritical because I don't use these on every instrument. I use them on um, my small bore tenor. I use them on my medium bore tenor. And I have a rim on my contra mouthpiece as well. And otherwise, I don't have them for every instrument. But this specifically has saved small tenor trombone for me. I've played a lot of it in the last few years. I had to, um, starting to double at Disneyland. And I did in the past as well, just not as heavily. And the small bore tenor has always been just like no man's land. It's so hard to find a mouthpiece that fits my face but still makes a characteristic sound on the instrument and response. This does all of that. It just does. It feels so good. I didn't know what it meant to have such a good match between mouthpiece, instrument, and player until I got this mouthpiece for my King 3B. And now I just don't have to worry about it. I just plug the mouthpiece in, I get the horn out, and I can just make a characteristic sound like immediately. 
And this mouthpiece made me think about all my other setups in such a more critical way. I'm like, oh, if this can be this good, why can't my other setups be as responsive, as easy to play, as just simple to put together and just play instead of having to warm up and find the sound over the course of an hour? This just works. And of course, with my Lexan rim that I have on right now, I can play outside in the winter, which I'm doing a lot, of course. And it just makes my life so much easier. I also have a metal rim, of course. And yeah, I highly recommend if you are a, a doubler trying to play small bore tenor, trying to play medium bore or whatever, the Doug Elliott system is the way to go. I know there's other great mouthpieces out there, but not as many of them do the modularity or the large rim smaller cup thing nearly as well that as uh, Doug Elliott does. All right, next up is another used purchase this year. My Cronkite double uh, bass tenor gig bag. Yes, so I have three double cases. I have one that fits two tenor trombones. So uh, in Goldilocks land, that's the one that's too small. And then I have one that fits two bass trombones in Goldilocks land, that's the one that fits that's, you know, it's way too big. And then I finally got the Cronkite that fits a tenor and a bass. The one that's just right. The one that you really, really want to eat. I don't know, this metaphor doesn't go all the way. In any case, finally, and yes, case is a pun here, finally got one that fits tenor and bass. Sadly, it is not perfect. It does not fit my monster bass because the monster bass has such a wide wrap. Oh well, it fits my Yamaha 613, which is usually the one that needs to be carried with a double. This is so incredibly useful. I have had these double cases for a while, but I've never had one that fit a bass and a tenor in like a comfortable way. My double bass case can, but it's really big and the tenor kind of rattles around, so I haven't used it that much. And this just fits both perfectly. It's nice and light. It's very small. I know it probably looks big on camera, and I don't really have anything to hand to compare it to, but this is kind of just like normal trombone size case plus like an inch or two in every dimension. So it's not that big. It's nice and light. It's easily carried on one shoulder because, and we'll talk about it in a second, My one of my other items is usually being carried at the same time. So I have to carry this with one shoulder. And this does it really well and doesn't destroy my, my balance. It's got nice backpack straps. It's well made. I really enjoy this thing. I don't think a double case like this, double gig bag, I should say, is for everybody. I'm never gonna fly with this. I'm just gonna use it around town, maybe to transport things. Um, and it is just incredibly useful for that. I don't recommend it for everyone, but this has been one of my best purchases that I just got out of the blue. Someone posted it and I was like, that's kind of a cheap price. Ah, should I get that? I already have two double gig bags. And yes, I'm, thinking about getting rid of one of the other ones because I have the one that I need. All right, last item on the list, and someday I will talk about this more in detail, is my North Face backpack. This is a Router Transit, yes, I remember that correctly, um, North Face backpack, and I think there's like a specific size to it maybe. Um, this is just the one that I happen to have. It's large, it's like, 20 liters, I can't remember the sizes for these things. I got it a while back because I've had the same Jansport backpack and a bunch of UCLA backpacks for years and years and years and years. And they're all good bags. They're all missing like really big things in some way or another. Um, my Jansport I have had since I was 12. So it's not in perfect shape and it's definitely behind in terms of technology. And my UCLA bags are all just a little bit small and not really up to the, the what I need to do with them day to day. This, however, is, it's been to multiple countries at this point. It can carry like 50 pounds of stuff and be absolutely massive, or it can be relatively light and hold exactly what I need. And someday, like I said, I'm gonna go over my everyday carry, what I keep in this, which is a ton of stuff because I just like to be prepared. And this just holds all of it with kind of no issue. I have specific spots for like every single possible thing that I can possibly need. Um, I can put my iPad in here. I can put my laptop in here. It's very comfortable on the back. 
Um, when it's in lightweight mode, like it does right now, it's not that heavy. It's got a nice chest strap. It's got a nice waist strap. Um, it's nice and black and just doesn't really stick out, even though I like a cool backpack. This one does kind of fly under the radar in a way that I appreciate. It's got easy access to stuff that I use a lot. It's got semi-difficult access to stuff that I don't use a lot, but it fits a lot of stuff. It's got a water bottle pocket on this side and another one on the other side, so I can put other stuff in that one. I use the absolute crap out of this backpack. Like, almost every day I am carrying this backpack somewhere. And it's been nearly flawless. Like I said, the main pocket is huge. It's like carry-on luggage sized. So if something gets in there and gets to the bottom, you either have to open the whole bag up or you have to search for like 15 minutes and tire out your arm trying to find this thing. That's the one downside, and I've kind of solved it by using a bunch of different little bags to put stuff in. Again, we'll talk about that in more detail in the future. But that's my last object for 2022 that I really enjoy using. Uh, just in the review, we got my iPad Pro 12.9 inch specifically. We've got my earplugs from Edematic, link in the description. My Doug Elliott mouthpiece, which I think I just put away. My Cronkite double tenor base uh, gig bag and my backpack. Those are my favorite objects, more videos to come, rounding up the year, and that's it for now. See you all in the next video.